Now in this video we're going to be having a look at what the macro is actually doing under the hood so that you can write about and describe how the data was generated in this automated fashion using ImageJ. To do that let's have a look at the macro that we use. So we're going to click on Plugins, Macros and Edit. We'll have a look at this uh, Niagara Cell Counts for Batching macro that we use because that's the one that we use to generate the data. So if we double click on that, the macro gets opened up in this editor. Now some of the processes gets taken care of by the batching process in image J. So under process and batch, remember we clicked on macro. This batch process is a function of image J and that takes care of opening each of the uh, subsequent images so we didn't need to specify any of that in the actual macro so we'll ignore that bit but the actual macro itself so the actual analysis of each of the images gets performed here now the functions that are called for in the macro are functions of image j so as a general rule uh, the the macro then specifies a function and then there's a, a bunch of settings which are usually written in pink in between inverted commas and um, the series of functions that are necessary in order to analyze each of the, the images are then performed. And so let's go through line by line to see what the macro is doing. So first of all, the region of interest is added to the region of interest manager. So that's what this first step is. Next, we convert the whole image into 8-bit, which is just grayscale. So that goes from uh, 0 which is black up to 255 which is white. So it, there's 255 different steps in a grayscale image. The next two lines are for a function called thresholding. So we need to tell image J what we're going to call a positive label and We've tried lots of different settings, or rather Tyler tried lots of different settings in order to work out what the best threshold is. We've got some lightly stained sections and we've got some really darkly stained sections. Of course, we had to compromise and work out what's, what's a nice in-between value. And we found that 160 or a level of 160 sort of works well for the, the, larger, uh, the larger number of sections. So that's the threshold that we're setting and we're saying that everything darker than 160 we're going to call positively stained everything lighter than 150 or 159 uh, we're going to say is uh, is not labeled now the next step is we're going to convert those thresholded cells so everything that's darker than 160 we're going to convert that to a mask so that we can then do something to it. We need to measure those, those profiles that are darker than, than our setting. And so that's what these next two steps are doing. They're converting that thresholded uh, area into a mask which we can then analyze. Now we only want to analyze what's inside the region of interest. So, so this next line selects our region of interest in the region of interest manager. So that way the next command only runs on that selection. Now the next command is to run the watershed function. One of the things that we need to do when analyzing cells automatically is somehow get the computer to detect the different cells. Now of course one of the problems are if uh, I open up one of the one of the sections and of course I've closed them all you can see that there's a whole bunch of cells that are sort of just sitting on top of each other particularly the medial substantia nigra pars compactor the cells are quite small and they're quite densely packed the hippocampus is even more densely packed than this as, as is the, uh, the, um, the cerebellum. So there's areas of the brain where the cells are really jammed close together. And uh, so this part of the substantia nigra is similar to those. Um, and so we need some way of telling the computer how to separate all of these cells which are just sitting on top of one another. And so the function that we're using is this function called watershedding. Now watershedding looks at these cells and this 
big collection of cells that are sitting together and it assumes that this irregularly shaped blob blodge here is a series of cells and if you draw a line between the narrowest point of these splodges that that means that they're separate cells if you google water shedding just as an example let me bring that across um, you get a picture like this so they use circles or, or spots just as an example and some of those spots are touching each other and so this image here demonstrates what water shedding is doing to our cells as well so our cells have also turned the image into a binary black and white image where neighboring cells are just sitting on top of one another the algorithm looks for the narrowest point between those irregularly shaped splodges and calls them individual cells and just draws a line around them now once water shedding has drawn a line around all of our positive cells or the cells that are above our threshold level that we've selected we then need to analyze all of those particles that have been generated or that have been selected and so that's what this next line does we use the function called analyze particles and we're telling it to count everything that's above 200 pixels so there's obviously going to be things that are smaller than 200 pixels but we're saying that they're probably not cells and again that's very much a compromise thing some cells are bigger some cells are smaller some cells we're going to have taken the section through parts of the cell and so it's not a full cross section um, somewhere we have to draw a line and say right everything bigger than this size we're going to call a cell everything smaller than this size we're going to say that that's too small to call a cell and we just have to choose a number and so in this case we've tried a few different ones and we've chosen 200 because that sort of seems to give a reasonable estimate now these last functions reset image J ready for the next image so first of all we select the region of interest which was entered into the region of interest manager and then we delete it so that way the region of interest manager is ready for the next one and then we close each of the thresholded images that uh, were generated when the image J was was creating and analyzing that first image so hopefully all that makes sense if you can summarize that in some way and um, a really good resource to use is if you go to Google and just basically Google any function that you don't understand uh, and any command that you don't understand with image J um, there's usually really good because it's open source there's usually really good descriptions or pictures um, of what each of those functions is doing in image J so I hope that helps and I hope that shows you how to uh, bring up this information ready for you to to type it out into your thesis see ya